Hey all, Jason Lawrence here. I want to cover a couple questions that I've gotten on some of my recent videos. The One of the questions is about contracts. So we've got people that are you know, starting home building companies and if they're going to be working with a customer, building a house for a customer, you know, even if they're going to be doing a, a renovation or an add-on or something like that, contracts is, is a question. So I'm going to cover that question. The other question pertains to finding a lot. And, you know, somebody had asked, you know, there, there are lots that are available in, you know, older neighborhoods where the home values aren't as high and the lots are, you know, priced close to $200,000, but they've been on the market for, you know, a hundred plus days. So should be able to get the lot for quite a bit less was the question. And then also the second part of that question was, should I use a realtor to help me find lots and, you know, get better deals on the lots that are out there for sale? So I'll cover the, the first question first about the contract. So what I've been telling people, and this is, this is what we do as well. Real quick, I just want to jump in here and mention my membership services that I offer. Um, we do monthly Zoom calls. We've got a video library of videos that are not on YouTube. I've got all kinds of forms and checklists. One I'm gonna talk about in this video here, a lot investigation and contingency checklist. So if you're looking for, for a lot to purchase, uh, so much valuable information in there, check it out in the details below. We use the standard state of Wisconsin building contract that we got from our local, our Wisconsin Builders Association. So if you're gonna become a home builder, if you're gonna be even in the, the remodeling, um, you know, new construction industry, remodeling additions, whatever it is, then it definitely makes sense to become a member of your state builders association. Uh, when, when you, or actually it's a little bit better. If, if you become a member of your local builders association, so for example, I live in Racine County, which is just, you know, south of Milwaukee. And there is a Racine and Kenosha Builders Association. We, we are members of that. You do pay a yearly amount to, uh, to be in there. But then when you join that local builders association, you're going to become a member of the Wisconsin or the State Builders Association. So you're getting, you know, the, the, the benefits of both. And, you know, some of, the, some of the benefits with the local builders association, especially if you are, are new to the industry, you're gonna be able to meet all kinds of people that are, you know, people that are in the association are in helping mode. They're, they're not looking at it like, oh boy, there's another HVAC contractor in here. We don't want to deal with that. You know, we don't want to help you at all. They're, they're in help mode, basically. So you're going to be able to get some good advice there. You're, uh, you're going to be able to, if you're a builder or if you're a contractor, you're probably going to be able to, you know, develop relationships with some of the contractors, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, foundation, whoever it is. So if you are in a position where you haven't built the home yet, or you're going to be building a home, it's, it's really a great resource for meeting contractors and usually contractors that are, that are members of the local builders association are not scammers. They're not contractors that have issues. They're not sketchy contractors. I mean, at least with our local builders association, you know, I, can't think of any, you know, iffy contractors that are, that are, that are in ours. I mean, not that they're, that they're campy, but for the most part, it, it adds a layer of protection. So once you become a member, they, at least in Wisconsin, they do. And I'm sure in the other States as well, they do have contracts for, you know, remodeling for new home construction. And you can, you can certainly add things to it. There, you know, are blank pages that you can, add different things to it. Like we actually put a clause, we, we took the standard contract and we, you know, we crossed out and redlined some things and we, you know, we put an amount that we want for a construction deposit. We have a, uh, um, a clause that we put in at the end of the contract that basically uh, a lumber clause that states, you know, this is what the, the, the price of lumber is today. 
and depending on what we pay for lumber when we have lumber dropped and delivered you know we know what the difference is we can fill in both of those amounts but at the time of the contract we've got the amount of what the lumber is today and really you could have that for any construction cost i mean that would be a construction cost you know a construction escalation clause or in this case a lumber escalation clause the other thing that we make part of the contract is i've got a uh, what i call a, a buyer worksheet that i put together so if somebody comes in and they pick one of our floor plans that we you know, have a base price for, and we add in all the things that they wanna do on top of the base price, my buyer worksheet shows what type of house it is, what the base price is, it lists everything that's included, and then it lists all the items that we're adding that aren't included and what those amounts are. And that gives us one total amount. I call that my addendum A to the building contract. So it's my buyer worksheet while we're working with the buyer. But once we put a contract together, that's the addendum A to the building contract. So I, I print that off, I scan that all in together. So the building contract references C addendum A for you know specs and, and details on pricing. Because when you're gonna give a contract to a bank, or even if a, a customer is gonna sign a contract, it's gotta be specific, it needs to state everything that's in there. I mean, you could even have it state, you know, the, the contract is, you know, representing the blueprints that are dated, you know, and then have the date of the, you know, the final revision that was done on the blueprint. So you're basically not putting the contract together and, until you've got signed off on plans with somebody. So you know what that cost is going to be. They know what that cost is going to be. So you can have the contract, the survey, the, uh, the addendum A, you know, as much detail as possible in there. Cause if it's, if it's in the contract, it's in the house. So if a buyer is gonna sign a contract, they wanna be able to see everything that's in the house. They wanna know that it's for this specific house, you know, for the blueprint that I reference. They wanna feel comfortable with things. And then when that contract is signed by the buyer and goes to the bank, the bank's gonna do an appraisal on it. So the bank needs as much information as possible. Survey shows where it's located. The blueprint gives them all of the information for the home, the square footage, uh, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, how many floors, all of the info that they need. And then the addendum A tells what the price is and it lists everything that, that goes into that price. So it's got all of the information that's there. So that's what I recommend for a contract because the the State Builders Association or maybe even your local builders association is gonna have one, but a lawyer, drafted up that contract. If it's for the State Builders Association, they have lawyers that work for them. They drafted up that contract. They draft it on, they're, they're on the builder side. This is a builder's association, so it's skewed a little bit more towards you as a builder, which is a good thing. It protects you that much more. And then, like I said, you can add things to it. So that's what I would recommend for a building contract. Now, as far as the the lot goes and, and finding a lot and getting a good price on a lot. Well, just because a lot has been on the market for a hundred plus days doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be able to get it for way under asking price. In fact, a lot of sellers that are selling properties, they believe that those properties are worth more than they actually are. And depending on their financial situation, you know, maybe Maybe there's a guy, he's living in a house, him and his wife, and the lot next door is for sale. It's owned by the, you know, the couple living in the house. They bought both lots 20 years ago and they, you know, they built on the one lot. So they don't owe anything on this lot. They, you know, they like the fact that it's, that it's open there. You know, maybe they're not completely adamant about having somebody build there, but Hey, if they get the right price, they're okay with it. Well, that property could be on the market for five years and they're not gonna come down on the price. They're just gonna wait it out until somebody gives them what they want for it. So just because a property has been on the market for a number of days doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be able to get it for you know much under or a lot under what the asking price is. I would definitely recommend working with a realtor so if, if a buyer is selling a property and you see there's a real estate sign in the yard, that seller is paying the real estate agent, in most cases, 6% to list that property. 
And if you go directly to the realtor that's listing the property and you write an offer with them, they're, they're gonna earn a 6% commission. So the seller of the lot is gonna pay the realtor a 6% commission. So when a seller is looking at a price that they're gonna, an offer that they're getting for the lot, they have to take into consideration, okay, um, we're gonna have 6% going to the realtor, I've gotta pay closing costs, this, that, and the other. If you are working with your own realtor and your own realtor writes up an offer and submits it to the listing realtor, the seller is still paying 6%. The listing realtor is now only gonna get, you know, we'll say 4%, and you, your buyer, your 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 real estate that agent that you're using is gonna get a small, they're gonna get about 2% or a little bit more. So they're gonna get a commission for writing that offer for you. Either way, the seller is paying the exact same real estate commission. So some people may think, well, if I go right to the, the real estate agent that's got the property listed, I'll be able to get a better price because there's not another realtor involved. Well, that's not true. And if you've got another realtor that's involved and they're gonna be actually writing up the offer for you, well, they're on your side. They're looking out for your best interest. If you are just gonna contract contact the realtor that's listing the property, that realtor, their first duty is to the seller. So they're gonna be doing what's in the seller's best interest. So they're not necessarily gonna be looking out for you and recommending all of the proper contingencies that should go into a lot offer. If, if you're working with uh, your own agent, then they should know what contingencies to put in there. Because if you're buying a piece of, of vacant land or, or a lot, you, you wanna get an accepted offer on it, but you want contingency. Unless you know without a shadow of a doubt, you know everything about this property. It's got sewer, water, gas, and electric. There's no soil issues. You you know everything about it. You can just put in a, a, a cash offer, no contingencies, close quickly, and get it for the, the least amount of expenses possible. That's great. But a lot of times you don't know what's under the ground or if you know is sewer and water at the lot is it across the street that could be a 15 twenty thousand dollar difference in in you know lot improvement costs uh, part of my uh, my membership that i have i do have a lot investigation checklist which covers everything that you need to be looking for and suggests contingencies to be putting into lot offers so that's something that i offer with my uh, with my membership so you want to have a realtor working for you. They're going to be able to, you know, they can kind of put you on a list. They, they've got access to everything that's on the MLS. When you're looking at lots on realtor.com, things aren't updated in real time there. Uh, like Zillow, for example, it may show that a lot's still available, but in reality, there's already an accepted offer on it. So it's best to be able to get these listings and this lot information directly from the MLS. And in order to do that, you need a real estate agent that's gonna do that. So a realtor is gonna be able to see everything that's out there that matches up with the criteria you're telling them, price point, location, um, so on and so forth. They're gonna be able to send you a link so you can see everything that's for sale that matches that criteria. And then if you're interested in something, they can do some investigating on it. They can contact the, the seller's agent and get the, the survey and get some of the other information that you need in order to, you know, make a purchase and close on that property. So it is a good idea to have a real estate agent that, that you're working with on your side and ideally finding one that, I don't, know, I don't know if I wanna say specializes, but one that has experience with vacant land. A lot of real estate agents don't really know anything about vacant land. They don't know that they should be, I mean, I, I've, I've seen customers that have come in, they've bought in properties through a realtor and we get to the point where, okay, we're starting to do survey work, figure out where we want the home. And, you know, Mr. Customer, did you know that, that three quarters of your property is wetlands and we can't build on, on any of that? We've got this little area that we can build on. It's the first they're hearing of it. The realtor never mentioned it. There are no contingencies that were put in there. Um, got, we've got another one where, um, somebody's gonna be building with us. They bought this lot for a really big, it was a very big purchase. It was it was a nice lot, spent a lot of money on the lot. We'll come to find out there, 
they're gonna have to connect to sewer and water. Not only are they gonna have to connect to the water, they have to extend the water main all the way across the front of their property, which is like 300 feet. It's gonna be uh, outrageous. I mean, this is gonna end up costing over $100,000 to get sewer and water to this property. That is obviously something that they should have known before they were closing on the lot because I guarantee they wouldn't have closed on the lot or they would have renegotiated the price. So you wanna make sure that you're doing the due diligence and you want a realtor that's got some experience with vacant land so that once you do find a lot, they know what to do, they know what to check for and they can help you out there. Well, that's all I've got for this video. I just wanted to answer those two questions. Thank you so much for your time and God bless.